Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. As you can see by the date, it's the beginning of the June. We've come out to the woods, check on the feeder, fill it up. We don't really get squirrels this time of year, but we fully expect a load of youngsters to turn up at the end of July, beginning of August. Well, there's my daughter over there. She does happen to have a scythe in her hand. She's helping me. She's clearing a spot to keep the vegetation down. My son's helping all he can by lifting logs. It's important to keep an eye on your feeders regularly. You can see it's beginning of September now. I can see a lot of damage has happened to this feeder. It's had a bit of a pasting. I filled it back up again, left some spilt grain on the edge. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to shoot it sometime soon. I've started the formation of a little body stopper at the bottom. What looked quite bizarre to me. It appeared to be grass at first. It's all the contents of the pheasant feeders have been tipped on the floor. It'll never survive long, but it does look strange. Just about make it my dog running around. She comes for a walk as well. We are a bit later on in September. And you can see the level started to drop again. It's sloping from back to front. It's a couple of inches at the back. And the whole hand depth at the front. So that's not a bad amount of grain gone. You can see bits of broken stuff in the hopper. So I know stuff's been on it, so I'll have to visit it soon. In the meanwhile, I've received this package. Very kindly donated to us by the good people of H&N. They were sent to us free with no strings attached. I've used H&M pellets before. The Terminators to be exact, very good results. So I thought they were very well made pellets. So I jumped at the chance. They asked what I wanted. So I was bold and asked for 10 tins. Varying types in 22 and 177. Right then, the time has come for a bit of testing. I shall be using the BSA R10 Mark II and 22, and my two Theban Rapids, the middle one 177, and the bottom one's a 22. The kind people H&N sent me a selection of their pellets, which I've asked to have a go of. Totally for free, and I should be accuracy testing them today to see if they're worth using in my rifles, if my barrels like them. And if they are, then they will be coming up in the coming months worth of videos where they will be used on feeders and after rats. So hopefully this will go well. I'm not going to delve into all the results I got because everyone's barrels are different. But what I do know is, over 15 yards, out of my BSA R10, these Hunter Extremes do group rather well. That's a whole magazine there, under a five pence piece, 15 yards. So it'd be rude not to take it out with this BSA R10 Mark II. Take it to that feeder that was dropping down. Let's see how I get on. Here's the approach, first light, as we so often do. It normally pays to get in a hide at first light. We do this quite often. Usually get one straight away, which are usually local ones. Then you usually have to wait an hour or two, or once from the surrounded area filter in. We just call them travellers. So you usually have to travel a bit of a distance. Once there's a known food source. If it's a big enough one, there's enough room. They might even set up home in the near vicinity. And once you've emptied them drays, new ones coming into the area, find the empty drays and take up residence. So it all works in the long run. The feeder gets established. It makes your job easier, getting rid of them all. And just to emphasise the time of the day it is, another picture of the big old moon. I'm just going to walk across the field to the wood, go past the lake. Beautiful sunrise, looks to be a good day, considering the time of year. And I just skip the walk. I've got pretty much set up in my hide. I usually go over, put a bit of a target on the top of the feeder. Or use my spinner or something like that and chuck a few bits of grains on the ledge. I should be using a sniper cam today because you do like your scope cam. I'm in the hide, can't quite make it the sniper cam. And that's the view I've got. 
which is somewhat different to the viewer has at home when they're watching this video on a big television. You'll see all the camera sees. I'm sat pretty much to the middle and I shoot to the right. So my view is obscured by the middle of the hide a lot of the time. Very often I'll spot a squirrel come from that direction and I'll be able to get the cameras going. And the camera's on the left, if you've noticed, the main camera. And what I do, when I see a squirrel come in, I duck down, and I open the camera up, wake it up, turn it on, and set it recording. Then I duck back down again to get hold of the rifle. Then I lift the rifle up, and I start trying to acquire the target by looking down the sniper cam. I'm not looking at what the camera's looking at, which picks up so much more than I ever could, sat in my hide. You see that at home, but I don't. Just getting that point across before you go any further, because in previous videos it seems to be a bit of a confusion to some. Right then, now we're done with that bit, let's get a cup of tea on the knee and sit there and wait for squirrels to turn up. That's pretty usual. I usually turn the camera on, record the sounds, see it's getting light enough for the camera to work. I've heard this magpie, plus a load of other songbirds. I usually use the bird's song as a sign that the forest is waking up. And I should be on alert. That's per usual. The birds come to the little bit of wheat I've left on the ledge. I like the activity, as I said in previous videos. Good old Mr. Robin's turned up quite early. I like to think that that activity gets the squirrels' attentions, even if they didn't know it was here. And it also gives me something to look at and film. Quite a few more birds making it to the feeder now. Light levels have got a bit better. A couple of female pheasants come in. They're part of the shoots pheasants. There's feeders around the woodland and they've been bred for a private shoot. So I've got no permission to shoot them. I don't want to anyway. I'll just sit and watch the hen birds at work. A few spilt grains. They're picking them up. I spotted some more movement. Some sort of mouse. I'm looking for it out here. It's over there actually. You can see the movement just about off screen. The camera just about caught it. I'm still hunting for it. Anything to point a camera at. It's almost more interesting to shoot with a camera than a rifle these days. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to remove some grey squirrels. And hopefully one will turn up in a minute. Has this one seen me? I turn the camera off, I need to have to turn it straight back on. So I spot a squirrel running in from the other side of the woodland. I see this more often these days since I move up the feeder around the tree. I see it's come up the back side. Using H&N Hunter Extremes in 2.2 calibre. And I'm hoping it's going to go on the feeder. If you look in that circle over there, it's another example of what the camera catches that I miss. A squirrel moving around in the background. I didn't know that at the time. It's only during the editing process I spotted it. I sped this bit up now because that squirrel's gone off to the left and pretty much disappeared from view. Here he comes. Took him long enough. You've got to be patient. He's dashed in. He's going all the right way. Get up on the feeder, son. I'm reaching for the rifle now, duck down, I'm not looking at this, I have no idea what's happening outside. I do know though, because I've got the sniper cam on, I've picked him up, I should be tracking him. There he is, tempting straight on shot, but that head movement, that's what will catch you out, I've got to make a judgement call over how you think the squirrel is. It seems to have frozen now. It's taking a hard look at my gun moving, I think. Straight on headshot. Drop straight to the ground. That's what I've taken to doing lately. Looking at him through the scope. As per usual, a bit of a delay. And a few kicks. That's normal. See the link in the description to Ted's video about why they kick. And it's all over for Mr. Squirrel. More than happy with that. The Hunter Extremes 
Look to be excellent pellets on the basis of that shot. The straight on headshots do do a good job. I'm writing in my diary now. I haven't got round to turning the camera off. I'll just keep a little notepad. Detailing the time scroll to turn up at different locations, which has been useful in the past. Sometimes it doesn't pay to get there too early. They don't rock up till mid morning almost, on a rare occasion. But after a feed has been there a while, you usually get one or two close. And before I have a chance to turn the camera off, second squirrel runs in. It may have been that one from the other side of the wood, but it did come from the right, so maybe not. But there is a live squirrel in front of me. Let's a quick look at the one on the floor. And that's quite a common thing to happen. I've already inspected it to see if it's still breathing, and it's not. It's happened in previous videos where the squirrels paid attention to one on the floor quite a bit. It's turned out to be alive. This one sat up lovely for me. Put the crosshairs where I think his head's going to be. On the second bob. Pat it straight to the top of the head. Straight on head shot. It's down to the floor. Give it a quick look, see if it's still breathing. You never know with these things. Tough little creatures, but a well placed pellet normally dispatches them quite cleanly. I'm quite happy with that. Two on the deck. Waited a while, then you get two come along in quick succession. That's two in a matter of minutes there. Both drop rather well to the pellets I'm testing today. Like I said before, I've tested the accuracy. The accuracy was good. Now we're testing stopping power. And hollow points generally do a good job. Whatever they are. Quick zoom in on him. It's difficult to see at range. I often use the scope or the camera to check them over to make sure they're dead. Quite happy with that. This is right over the other side of the wood now. I'm freehanding it with my little camera. See, there's a squirrel there. Whereas the other squirrel I ringed earlier on in the video, on the opposite side of the wood, I hadn't seen it and the camera's picked it up. This one I've most definitely seen. I know there's other ones roving around this small woodland. I'm just going to hope it comes over for a feed. So there's plenty of optimism. I'm going to get some more. Seen him again now. My lame attempts at the squirrel call. It was twitching its tail earlier on. I started filming it. I was trying all sorts really. Just to get some attention. I'm only doing this one handed because I got the other hand on the camera. I was doing something similar to that. And I suddenly saw the tail flick. So it had some sort of effect. Whether it's going to call one in I don't know. You can hear a magpie in the background. They make so many other vocalisations other than just a normal chatter. It's worth remembering. If you hear these noises, there'll be a magpie nearby. Sometimes you might get them come down to a dead squirrel. They will be getting shot if it does. But this is what we came for. Here comes another squirrel. That one's just running from the right. Caught me totally unawares. I like to see them come in from distance, gives me a chance to get set up. I can have the camera going and the rifle at ready. And obviously if I wasn't filming, it would be a lot easier. Less to think of. Just go for the rifle and mount it and shoot. This one's had a quick sniff of the ones on the floor. Normal behaviour. I've got the sniper cam. And I found him. I've just got to track it now. Wait for an opportune moment. For some reason that side of the feeder is more tasty than anywhere else. Don't know why that is. Them were always good shots. Except when they move the head that quickly. I'm pretty certain it's going to sit still at some point. Just got to give it the opportunity to do so. I'm trying to freeze it there. Didn't seem to want to. A loud click seems better than anything else. But that'll do. Sitting up feeding nicely. Let's judge it now. There we go. 
onto it quickly. Pretty sure it was sat still. Another one hits the floor quite hard. Let's have a look at it, shall we? From what I can see of it, it's pretty much all over. Here comes a fourth squirrel. This one comes in. Sniffs a recently shot one. Gives it a good chewing on the leg. It sometimes happens. Get some sort of aggression going on. It's been recently shot. Having a good look at the other squirrel. Seems to be biting its arm there. You can see why they don't want to hang around when the squirrel turns up, he's a dominant one. If you've ever seen the teeth on a squirrel, or the damage they cause, you can only assume that would hurt quite a lot. I'm trying to pick it up on the floor now. I've had to shuffle my position around a bit. Temptation is to shoot it on the floor if it sits still. Just like that, side on headshot. I deemed it to have got into a position where a shot would be good. And that was a side on headshot. So we've got a bit of a kick in from the back legs. The front end's all limp. Looks like a perfectly good shot. And based on what the pellet's done on the others, I'm pretty happy with that. Good side on headshot. The camera's on. And I'll just show you before we go on any further. That's exactly the spot I was aiming at before I pulled the trigger. It could have been to the left a bit of a fraction, but it should have gone in through the brain. Anyway, about 10 minutes later, this one's come in from the right. I'll put the camera back on. I haven't noticed that one I shot about 10 minutes ago. It's twitching on the floor. It shouldn't be happening. That's not the mark of a well-shot squirrel because I'm not looking at the screen of the camera because it's over on the left so far. I've reached for the sniper cam. My attention is on this one. I can't see that one in the bottom left-hand corner at all. I'm just watching this one in the circle. That's what I can see. I know the others are dead. As far as I'm concerned, that last one is as well. I'm focused on this one with a sniper cam. I'm looking for an opportunity for a shot. And I'll shoot him on the ground, same as the last one. If he sits still enough. Sometimes they'll pick up a bit of food. Well, as so often happens, one of them will spend quite a bit of time investigating the ones on the floor. And I'm pretty sure they're all dead. And what happened there? I thought that was just a reaction from being pulled by the other squirrel. I'm starting to wonder what's going on here. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a dead squirrel. That didn't look very good at all to me. I'm still sticking with the live one. I can't see what you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. This one sits up and knock it straight down. Now I'm having a look at that one on the floor. Gone back over to it. I was going to shoot it a second time. And that's not the reaction I expected. So I gave it a second shot anyway. And by its reaction, it quite clearly wasn't dead. It's unconscious by the look of it. Definitely going to have to go and check that other one. I've got some doubt in my mind now. I have to leave the hide. Go and inspect all of them. Just to be on the safe side. Taking a rifle with me just in case. I'm pretty sure that last one's had it now. But I'm going to inspect him. And the other one I shot off the log pile. None of them are breathing. You can see that squirrel in the background again. Someone else the camera caught that I didn't see. The last one I shot is perfectly fine. Just that one. Like I showed you the impact point before. Should have been a good brain shot. Maybe it wandered off a little bit. They are quite tough creatures. That's why we go for headshots. Missed heart and lung shot. Or went a bit off. And gallop away. And it wasn't a clean kill. It didn't get away from me. As soon as I realised. 
Then it needed a second shot, it got one. All the others went down hard though. Can't fault the pellet on that front. Quite impressed. That was the first one. Quite a lot of blood on it. Bled out pretty well. Apart from the little wobble on the fourth squirrel. Five on the deck from this little wood wasn't bad. Well, that's where he lay. He took a straight on headshot. So I can only assume the one that wasn't killed outright wasn't a good headshot. Maybe it went a bit lower, possibly. That's the view of it all. That's where they all fell in the end. And there they all are with the R10. And here I am packing all my kit up, pop the hide on. A rucksack full of gear there. Extra long straps so I can put it over the top of it all. Sling the rifle over my shoulder. I don't fall over backwards with all the weight I'm carrying. Pick up my sticks and my chair. That's me off to go. Back off home. Put them in the freezer, ready to be delivered to the scouts. This session's over, so I'm still keen to test these pellets further. So I'll go out to pick your own farm. Another first light mission. I'm tucked up in my hedge as per usual. Same kit as last time, BSA R10. H&N under extremes. Here's an example of how easy the hide is to put up. Let's put out the bag, let it pop out. I never shut the doors on mine while I've had them open. All I do is just open up onto myself pretty much and spin it right to the right orientation. And because I'm in the hedge row, I just pinch the back together and reverse into the hedge. Very versatile little hide. Doesn't take long to set up at all. Because I've left all the windows open, it's easy to get the orientation right. Let's get my kit inside and get set up. That's it, pretty much. Sped it up a bit. I'll bore you with too much of it. I get a lot of questions asking about kit and setups, etc, etc. That's all we do, really. Now I'm in. Bit of mist in the valley. You can see from previous videos. Video's been lifted up the tree and straightened up. Time to check zero. Nothing wrong with that. Let's wait for the squirrels to turn up. I'll sort them out. It's Mr. Pheasant. Since it's been lifted up, you get less pheasants coming around here. That's not a problem. Those magpies come down, they're on the list. You only want them removed if possible. Not the pheasants, the magpies, that is. Mr. Pheasant doesn't hang around long, so there's nothing to keep him there. You see there's a bit of grain on the ledge, as per usual. Try and drag a few songbirds in, get some interest. There's Mr. Robin. Plenty of other birds turn up. Oh, I pretty much sat there for three to four hours, totally squirrelless. Didn't even see any rain the farm afterwards like when I wrapped up. It's very disappointing. I've since been out there and the level has been dropping. Obviously this was a little bit early this year. I will be visiting this place again. And unfortunately for me that was the best shot I got of the day. Shot to the moon with my camcorder. Anyway, I still want to test them. So yet another morning I'm up. I make to the same permission we were at the beginning of this video. Gorgeous sunrise, nice big city tree there. And I'm all set up, same as last time. A little bit more of a breeze today. Weather's been a bit foggy too. A little bit of rain pitter-pattering on the hide. European buzzards flying over the wood. 
It actually flew through the wood at one point, but I was too slow to get the camera on it. They don't normally put the squirrels off. At least I don't think they do anyway. Still waiting for one to land and pick up a dead squirrel in front of me. Maybe one day, eh? There was other squirrels in this wood when I left. Just gotta wait for them to turn up. Here comes Mr. Pheasant. A few spilt grains on the floor as per usual. And I'm sat there filming him. Pretty birds, as I said before. And also pretty stupid. I've been sat there about two hours or so now. When this pheasant turned up, I was quite happy to see something. I trained the camera on it, leant forward, turned it on. Because it's not moving, I haven't bothered to try and track it. I have to lean forward and lean to my left. It's quite awkward. I know the camera's got him in shot. I'm looking at the right hand side at him. And from across the wood, I spot some motion. Quickly grab the camera and pan it back. To try and work out where this is coming from. You can see this squirrel coming in from the right now. Quite glad they selected a white picture. You can see its approach across the floor. And now I can see it closer. I zoom in. The pheasant doesn't know it's there, and the squirrel doesn't know the pheasant's there. There you go, what's going to happen now? Oh dear. Nothing like a bit of a fright first thing in the morning. I don't know what the pheasant made of that. I'm not looking anymore, I'm going for my rifle. I'm not even sure if the squirrel's still there, but it is. Fortunately, it comes back into camera shot. Nothing on the ground, nothing's been shot. Oh, a few spilled grains, rather awkwardly, staying on the floor. I'm looking to stick it with a hunter extreme. Just prove the point. They do a lot of damage. Here we go. If it sits like that, it could be in trouble. Knife's going to move his head that quickly, though. Just gotta let it settle. I'm waiting for it to sit up to be honest. Is it gonna? Thinking about it. Nah. Here we go. Have to readjust now. So I can look down at the floor. I'm trying to scrutinise it with a scope cam. Looking to see if it's still breathing. But no, it's not. That last session here, that one squirrel gave me a bit of paranoia. Nothing wrong with that shot though. I'll zoom the camera in on it now. Can pick up anything. It's more like it. First dead squirrel on the deck. And I've got lots of birds coming in and going over the next few hours. I even got this great big bug land on my ear. Whether it was an accidental landing on my ear or whether it was after something else, I do not know. My turf out the size of the hide. Surprised to see an insect wandering around this time of year. There's the hide. There's me one squirrel. Sent the pellet in an angle it should have crossed the brain. It went down like a sack of spuds. So I'm quite happy with the hunter extremes. It did do a lot of damage, apart from that one. So I can only assume pellet side hit it and deflected below the brain or something else has happened. It hasn't hit the target properly anyway. Because if it had, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be breathing. So just the one for this session. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. I went back home and tested them out to 28 yards, and that was a 10 shot group I got. It's a quite useful hunting pellet, hopefully, I'll be using it in future. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.